Hi, I'm Square, and today I'm going to see how we can both improve by reading the book Mastery by George Leonard. First, what is mastery? The mysterious process during which what is at first difficult becomes progressively easier and more pleasurable through practice. How many of us at some point in our lives decide to set upon a journey of mastery? Whether it be to ride a bike, or learn an instrument, perhaps you wanted to hit the gym and get fitter and stronger. During those times, what obstacles did you come across? I know I have come across heaps. When I set out to learn the piano, I wanted to play songs immediately. In fact, I remember forcing my teacher to teach me fair release, even when I barely understood the basics. It seems you couldn't just start playing songs, you had to learn what the treble clef was, the bass clef, middle C, sharps, flats, dots, ties and staccato. Don't get me started on the metronome, I absolutely hated that thing. It was extremely difficult reading musical notes, controlling the movement of my fingers, all while making sure I was playing in time and accurately with both my hands. At times it was a catastrophe. I felt like things were moving too slow. I simply wanted to play the cool songs now. I guess the point I'm trying to make is that the path to mastery is a tedious path, and its improvements are not as fast as we would like, or as society makes it out to be. We often hear about quick fix schemes on TV, whether it be some special drink that is bound to make you shed a few pounds, or an instant holiday in Hawaii today, if you buy this lottery ticket. Now let's talk about the mastery curve. Progress to mastery tends to occur after a rather long period spent on the plateau, where we continue to practice repeatedly with small spurts of growth in between. The path to mastery is a slow one, and there will be times when we feel like we don't improve at all, and it's at these times that we feel frustrated, because we are made to believe that progress occurs rapidly and in quick succession. And it's at these times that some of us may think of quitting and picking up something easier. In this book, George Leonard introduces us to our first character, the Dabbler. The Dabbler is someone who approaches every new challenge or opportunity with gigantic amounts of enthusiasm. They buy all the new flashy equipment, jump straight into the task. The first rush of knowledge and improvements fill the Dabbler with plenty of excitement. Not long after though, they have an energy drop, resulting in skipping lessons, making excuses. You hear things like, there's just not enough time to practice for an hour a day, or it's just not that interesting as I thought, maybe I should do something else that's more suited for me. This is reflected in people who tend to keep jumping around different jobs. People who need the stimulation of a new environment and new people to keep things fresh. But as soon as things start to plateau and their improvements don't come quickly, it's time to move on again and again. Next we meet our second character, the Obsessive, who too is full of energy and is obsessed with constant improvement. They see the end result as all that matters, not the path of which you get there. They willing to cut corners for faster results. When progress tapers out, they double their efforts in hope of getting more results, despite advice from senior colleagues and friends. Though the Obsessive does often achieve their wish, they are too often met with downward spirals that can affect those around them, as they are unable to handle periods on the plateau for very long. And then we have the hacker, who is a bit different. The hacker enjoys getting relatively good with the task at hand, and then they sit on the plateau indefinitely. Common examples are the doctor who isn't interested in conferences that present new ideas and techniques in medicine. Or the basketball player who has a great jump shot but doesn't bother trying to improve their free throw percentage and thus gets fouled and is a complete team liability in the fourth quarter. The hacker settles for the mundane life, the 9 to 5 grind without further purpose and desire to grow. Now these categories aren't perfect, and you and me could be juggling all three categories for different aspects of our life, or even mixing a few. Knowing this helps us on our quest for mastery, for at least we know what not to be. Learning to love the plateau, or what I sometimes call the grind. We in fact spend most of our lives on the plateau. Although often we see the end result as the ultimate reward, it tends to be over in just a moment. And then instantly we are back on the grind the next day once again practicing towards a new goal. Training at the gym is a great example. You don't expect to get stronger after every session, or every week. Sure, at the start you may make your newbie gains, but that period of grace eventually dries up, and you know that. You might be benching 90 kilograms per month before you clear 95. Not to mention the days where you're just not as strong and there's a huge dip in your performance and you end up benching 85 instead. As soon as you reach your goal, you're going to set a new one anyway, and it never stops. During that period of plateau, you learn to love it, enjoy it, live it. If you commit to it, you will improve. You don't need to rush or cut corners, don't risk injury. It is all part of the path to mastery. Enjoy the plateau, love the grind. Kobe Bryant in an interview on the year of his retirement was asked what he loved most about the game of basketball. His answer wasn't the rings, scoring titles, fame. His answer was that he loved the sound the basketball makes when it falls through the net, that gentle swish of air. I believe he, like many other greats, truly understood the love of the grind and not just the end result. Next we have tips on how to achieve your path to mastery. 
Tip number one, get a good instructor. A good instructor is someone who is willing to teach even the slowest learners. Do not forget that just because someone is good at something, it does not mean that they are a good teacher. It takes patience to be a good teacher. A good teacher is someone who is willing to speak up when you are doing well and when you are not. Make sure your learning style is compatible with your teacher. Perhaps you are someone who is more hands-on and prefers live feedback. Or perhaps you prefer videos so you can stop, pause and think. Tip number two, practice. Perhaps the most basic and fundamental of all. The master you respect is someone who has done the same thing thousands upon thousands of times again, over and over again, meticulous and dedicated to his craft. Not the person who has done a thousand things only once each time. Ray Allen, who is one of the greatest NBA three-point and free throw shooters of all time, had one of the most strict training regimes. On game day, he would have the same routine of waking up, eating chicken, rice and broccoli, followed by making 200 shots in an hour and then stretching before every game. On games where he missed a clutch free throw, he would go back to the gym after and make sure to hit 100 free throws. This man was already one of the best at what he did, and yet he would repeat the process over and over in order to continue walking that path of mastery. And thank god he did, because if it wasn't for Ray Allen, the Miami Heat would still be on one championship while playing with LeBron James, and that would be pretty rough. Tip number 3, Surrender. It is much easier to draw on a blank sheet of paper than it is to draw on one that's already been scribbled on. In order to learn proficiently, you have to surrender away some of your knowledge and skills and accept the fact that you once again are the beginner venturing towards a new goal. Like a baby is able to learn any language on this planet because they come as a blank sheet of paper ready to be drawn on, you too can do the same by emptying and opening up your mind to new ideas and fundamentals. Tip number four, intentionality. You must believe in yourself and visualize yourself completing the task. Reinforcing the mind and body connection can make a significant difference in your performance. Whenever I attempted a heavy squat PR in the gym, I absolutely, with every bone in my body, believed that I could do it. If there was even a shed of doubt in my mind, I was likely to fail. Trust me, I've tested this one many times. Tip number five, the edge. Perhaps the simplest. Sometimes you have to take a leap of faith, a stab in the dark. Some of the most successful people, the masters of the world, are those who have taken risks and challenged their own limits. So this is alone, who was poor at the time, was offered big money for a screenplay of Rocky. He refused all offers unless he was playing the lead role. Now that risk was worth it. Tip number six, be prepared for change. The changes you make will not only affect you, but those around you. And with this comes the forces of homeostasis, that fight to bring things back to normal. Of course, we don't want normal, we want mastery now. Just like our bodies fight to maintain a temperature of 37 degrees, whether it's hot or cold, the changes in our life are similar. Be prepared for family and friends to not instantly agree with some of the changes you make. They aren't trying to undermine you, rather it's just the natural forces at work. Tip number seven, have support. Knowing others who are on a similar path to you can offer you advice and perspective. Hearing stories as well as telling your own stories is a great way to share information and learn from each other. Tip number eight, dedicate yourself to lifelong learning. The world is a big place and there is always something more to learn. Even if you have a PhD or are a professor in a specialty, always keep yourself open-minded. Education leads to progress, and progress leads to happiness. Tip number nine, stay fit. An active lifestyle, whether it is going to the gym for an hour a day or going for a run, will keep your body invigorated. This energy will without doubt translate into your daily life and assist you in whatever it is you choose to do. Sitting around all day will leave you stiff and lethargic. Tip number 10, laugh. Enjoy the path of mastery. Laughter is able to soften the sometimes bumpy ride you will have along the way. Being too serious may blind you from everything else around you. Finally, tip number 11. Set your priorities. When you are set on your path to mastery, you may look to improve several areas of your life. The thing is, everyone has a set amount of energy and time. It is simply not possible to do everything. Choose what you want to do most. Devote yourself. Your priorities are free to change, but make sure you stay focused. I hope you enjoyed the video guys, I know I have learned heaps from this book and perhaps now you have too. The book provides even more detail so feel free to check it out, it is a fun and easy read. Leave a comment and let me know what you think of the video and what I can do to improve. Maybe even throw in a thumbs up if you're feeling generous. Until next time, bye!